what is going on everybody welcome for the first time we're back to another dlj works video if you really don't know what this channel is about i talk about anything in the areas of coding design and careers related to those fields and this is something i'm very passionate about and i was before i recorded this video i sat up here and i thought huh dlj works not too many people may actually know what i'm about but if you've already are a subscriber or you've seen some of my other videos you know that is the realm that i operate in so i actually wanted to kind of mention that point before i actually got started but today i wanted to quickly touch on something that i don't think gets talked about a lot and that i hear in the community the web design and development community being touched on in terms of the way that people actually learn and that is active learning and passive learning now for me historically and being in this profession for a while since 2011 the best way that i actually learned was i would i, I got a whole bunch of programming books and actually as i'm talking you should see a nice little video clip some b-side footage of my library of all the coding books and design books that i have and what i would do is when i wasn't on a computer I would just sit and read and, and have my brain process all these concepts, fundamental principles when it came to using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, visual hierarchy, the design theory. I would read these things, take it, and I would just process it. So by the time I returned back to the computer, I was ready to implement it. And most of the times, I get mad scientists with it. So, for example, like if I'm trying to solve a problem, I'm sitting up here at the computer, I'm getting frustrated, like, oh, I can't figure this out. I would have to leave the computer and take some time to either spend time with the wife, play some video games, read my Bible, whatever it took. That's what I actually did. And maybe most of the time, if it's a problem, I would go back and I would research in one of my books to actually see what am I doing wrong here? What am I not getting? And then I would return back to the computer implement it and and actually probably my process would be would be that i'm spending about maybe 70 percent of the time actually just researching and thinking about the problem if i come across one and 30 percent of that would be the implementation so we're say we're spending about you know maybe if i'm coding i'm just flying through it like everything is coming easy peasy i'm having no problems by coming to a problem i'm spending about maybe two hours trying to figure that problem out then I'll come back to the computer and I'll probably only take like 30 minutes to implement it and make sure that I could test and prove that this is working. So a lot of people dismay or discredit actually book reading. That's not real coding. And you actually need to be coding every single time you sit at the computer in order to get and learn this. And I, I kind of disagree with that. You know, I mean, it takes that. I'm not going to lie to you. It, it, it does take that. I'm not discrediting it. But there are other ways that people can actually get into this field and learn. But you you do need to be in a I don't want to try to dictate how many hours you actually need to spend coding in order to get there. So everybody's brains. Everybody's brain is different. You know, it, it's just different. Everybody is going to learn differently at, at a certain speed, at a certain rate, at a certain level of intellect. Like when I get to certain deeper levels of JavaScript, like I'm just like, ah, uh, no, that, that's not why I got into this too deep, too deep. I would rather just go ahead and focus on the visual hierarchy and, and formatting and layouts of an actual website. That's that's where I that's where my fun exists. Fun exists for me and using CSS. And when CSS gets into SAS and that sorts of things, yes, it's fun because it, it does simplify actually doing the selectors, the classifications, the properties and stuff a little bit better, easier. But for me, I have to actually, I, I just, I have to actually stay in that room. So, you know, I, I want to talk about active and passive learning. So active learning, what what is that? Okay. That's exactly what I was just talking about. You're practicing coding or if you're just learning HTML, you better be writing some HTML. That's exactly what you need to be doing. Projects. Projects, as a former teacher, we used to have this thing called project-based learning. And if you're a young person watching this, you probably may have been engaged in that in middle school and high school. But projects pretty much dictate what sort of skill sets you need in order to accomplish this specific project. I am a firm believer in project-based learning because that's where a lot of my CSS and web design experience comes into play based on the types of web design projects that I actually had to do. And when you're working with certain platforms, 
you know, you get the fundamentals, you can almost work with any content management system, any sort of website builder. So I can work with Weebly, Wix, WordPress. I can do this from scratch. I could take my own um, skeletal layout and apply it to any one of those systems. It, it's nothing. It's, it's, it's really nothing. So and that's because of just doing the projects in the past. Participating in open source projects, that's things such as getting on GitHub, and seeing what people have and what what's going on in the repository, what sort of project can you actually become a part of in order to really improve your skill set? And there's going to be people that's going to be better than you, but that's a good thing. That's a truly good thing because they'll be able to school you and and show you where their what their processes are in terms of actually, you know, getting this done. What how did they actually implement this feature into this certain project that is going on here in github and to be honest with you i'm I'm gonna be real with y'all like i have a github account but i never had a reason to have something in a github repository so i'm gonna actually admit that and confess i'm probably being hypocritical in that advice but this is something that i know is a mistake of mine because i should have been active in it but the things that i've been doing and depending on your job and what you actually have you may not need to be in be involved in github you know you may hear somebody out there say that you know, you, you need to have a GitHub account and you really need to be active in a GitHub community. You need to have some projects going on. And that may not even, you may not even ever need to go down that route. So listen to it if it's going to benefit you. That's some advice that you can listen to if it's, if you're really trying to get deep in a program and learn certain, certain nuances. But if you're staying in the front end medium, you're just focused on layouts and that sort of thing. You may be working with active clients who are just looking for websites and trying to get their brand up as fast as possible. You know, you may not have time to have a GitHub and play around in that. So I don't, you know, that that's a, I don't know, a kill what you eat sort of thing. I guess that I may be the wrong metaphor is saying that too, but pick your poison, pick your poison. That's, that's where I'm trying to go with right now. Solving problems um, using the developer tool here in Google. So one of the things I actually like to do in Google is use the developer tool in order to see what's going on with a website. Now my screen kind of shrunk, but you, you may or may not be able to see this, but let's see here. More tools, developer tools. Okay. Like I said, you have my screen is kind of minimized here, so I can't really show too much of this, but with the developer tools, you can actually see how the website is actually built. If you're practicing HTML and you're reading it properly, that the, just looking under the hood of the website, that's what it's called in design and development is looking under the hood and trying to see what's going on will give you a really good understanding of how websites are built, the anatomy, be able to pick apart, reverse engineer it. So you can kind of, you know, use that and implement it into your own projects and practice. So that's something that I definitely recommend um putting your work out there and having others tear it apart and provide feedback this may also be actively due to you putting your project on github maybe on social media telling people out there to the world like hey i just built this crazy thing like check it out play around with it give me some feedback let me know what you guys think and the thing is having you have to have a thick thick some thick skin when you're giving feedback because if somebody picks apart your work and you're all sensitive like you're a sensitive little wuss going like oh they talked about my stuff I, I it's my work of art put so much blood sweat and tears get over that get that's crap get over that you need to be able to be open to what your users are saying because though web design to a certain extent is an art form there's a lot of science behind it too so um the, the actual art is subjective because if people like the look of your website, that that's relative. But the science actual part of it is, is this website functional? If your intent is for them to push this button and for them to do something, but it's not doing it or a link is broken, that's the science behind it. You know, they test and prove this is supposed to happen. It's not happening. I need to go back and I need to rework some things. So that's the active part. You want to be able to have people pick apart your work. You want to be able to, you want people to be able to tell you that your website sucks when necessary. You know, if they're saying that they're, you know, the, it looks great, but they don't really have any real good reason to use it other, other than that, besides it just being some sort of like trophy wife piece that they go on a website like, oh, this is such a beautiful website, but they don't have any real reason to come back to it. Then, I mean, you have to really think about the purpose as to why you're building a website and you need to, when you have clients, you need to express that to them as well. Let's talk more about the passive learning, reading books, 
that should be pretty self-explanatory. I actually just talked about that earlier. Thinking about the problem. What I talked about earlier as well. Um, when you're working on something, you have to sometimes move away from the computer. At least I know I do. And by the way, the, the, the suggestions that I'm giving, they're just suggestions based on my experience being in this field, testing, improving, seeing what works, how I know how my brain works when it comes to coding. And these things can actually be problematic. So you want to go about trying to find how your learning style is going to be when it comes to coding or doing any sort of visual design. OK, solving coding areas on sheets of paper. God, I could I don't, I have I have notebooks. I have notebooks. Maybe there'll be some B-roll over this or not. I don't know. Depending on how lazy I am right now. But I have notebooks full of just just notes and, and things me writing out, trying to visualize to see, OK, this part of the page is it showing up. What's going on with my code? And I would actually like write out and show try to work it out, try to work out kind of like what they do on the whiteboard. I'm just doing it on sheets of paper and I have notebooks full. And because I'm doing that, I'll come back to the computer, implement it, see that it works and I document. So there's a lot of journaling and documentation that's actually going on in terms of the actual me trying to solve this particular coding problem or design issue, you know, so that may be, that may bleed into active learning as well, but I see it more as a passive thing because you're not directly working on a computer talking with others. That also goes to bouncing your ideas off of somebody being away from the computer and just bouncing your ideas off of somebody that may be more knowledgeable or may not be more knowledgeable, but just being able to, to articulate and express what problems you're having and trying to really outlay that, that, well, you may not even be able to talk about the problem. You may be having a hard time, but trying to make attempts to talk about it, somebody else may realize what you're trying to say and a light bulb moment may come off for you and that's going to be a good thing. So that's what I mean when I say talking with others. So basically the simplest way for you to look at active learning is when you're on a computer, you're actively coding, you're actively designing, you're putting in that CSS, some Photoshop skills, whatever into play, and you're seeing some actual real life results. Passive learning, you're not on a computer, you're not actually producing anything as of yet to actually see those real time results. It's not like you type in a HTML tag, you go to the web browser, you hit refresh, boom, you see what your HTML tag looks like. That would be the active learning piece. Passive learning, you're not doing that, but you're thinking about maybe that HTML tag and why it didn't work. And then, you know, you're reading books, trying to go back to see what you did wrong, revise, reviewing, then you're going back to implement Oh. That's that was the problem. Now, let me go back here and let me actually test this out to see if it works. And to me, that's where the excitement comes in that in terms of doing this, you know, so that that's what it is. And I, I just wanted to make a very what I thought was going to be a quick video. Not be so quick, but hey, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, share this video. Talk about it. Let us hear what your thoughts are in the comment section. And let's go, let's go from there. Make sure to watch this video up here at your convenience and yeah dlj works baby see y'all in the next video god bless y'all